change your opinion much, or was it, was it pretty much what you thought after the game on Saturday? Yeah, pretty much what we thought. Um, I thought the effort was outstanding. Uh, you can't find anybody loafing. The guys played really hard. Um, we got to do a few things better, and, and then we had a, just a few kind of catastrophic plays that uh, changed the whole game. Yeah, it, it's a little bit of a, a lot of things. I didn't think we protected well enough. That's one of the things that uh, we were drilled down on today and talked to the guys about. Um, and they did a good job. I give it to them. There were some twists and games that are tough to pick up that we didn't. Uh, but in general, we got to have uh, more time for our quarterback to throw. Yeah, but both punters have been doing exceptionally well in practice. Um, you know, his first effort, I expect it to get a lot better. Uh, probably some nerves and things there, but there's a lot of hidden yardage. You know, they got a couple punts and pinned us, and we had chances to do it and didn't. Um, we put a lot of emphasis on special teams. Thought the coverage units did a, a really good job. Uh, made the one critical error on punt return and did what we weren't trained to do and coached to do. and. Um, Got to punt a little better, and then obviously missed two extra points. Um, those are some of the mistakes we can't have happen. When you look at the offensive line, when you look at the game versus what you saw in camp, <coughs> square up, what's, what's the deal there? Yeah, um, you know, we, I give them credit. You know, we, we watched a lot of tape on them, tried to, to give our best guess to what they were going to do. Uh, they played an entire spring game in odd, and um, came out and played an even with wide nines and fives, and uh, we just hadn't had as many reps at, the, at that. Um, so that had a little bit to do with it. Um, but hey, we, we got to be better. Uh, we got to establish run. We got to be ahead in the game so we can commit to the run. Um, when you get behind in a game, then you're, then you're forced to do a few more things, and um, there are a lot of factors that led to that. How rare is it for a defense to come out with those guys trying to get around your tackle? Not rare, just not. We weren't expecting it. Um, a lot of people play, you know, wide fives, wide nines. Um, you know, we, we we just we had prepared some for that look. We had prepared for the contingency that they might do that, but certainly not what we were expecting. Hey Scott, is there anything that Caleb could have done differently? I mean, look, we didn't get a definitive view on the telecast. Did you see anything on film? Yeah, you know, all I saw in the during the game was the bang bang play of him hitting the quarterback right as he was throwing it. Um, he's got to be smart and not bury him into the turf. I assume that's what they called. Um, that play right there w was probably the biggest play in the game. Caleb's been uh, playing wonderful all fall. Uh, I thought his his level of play in that game was good. But there's critical moments where you got to make a snap decision and a smart decision and a decision that's best for your team. Um, there was a few times in that game that we didn't. And uh, those those mistakes really cost us. You mentioned, you mentioned the game script being part of the reason you guys can mix it around. How much does that play into the um, pass protection? You know, when, they, when they know you're going to throw the ball, it makes it a little bit tougher for them to protect, right? Yeah, certainly. You know, I, I, their backup quarterback came in and did a, a tremendous job. But, um, you know, that's the situation you want for a guy like that to come in up seven or up 14. Um, be able to run the ball and throw when you need to. And then that's a little different situation than, than being behind and throwing. Uh, we had every opportunity to be in command of the game at halftime and uh, made some critical errors that uh, turned it into a deficit at halftime. And, and that changed the style of play for both teams. Was Lubick calling the plays on Saturday or was it you? No, I was calling the plays. Did, did, um, was there a moment where you reconsidered that? Because like, you kind of talked about Matt kind of doing it. And then no, I haven't talked about Matt and I doing it. We, we collaborate. The whole staff collaborates. And um, it was just an interesting game because about half of our game plan was kind of out the window uh, when they came up and lined up the way they did. So uh, we really had to, to scramble and uh, go to alternative plan and uh, try to adjust and did some good things, but not enough of them.
Uh, not really. Um, I want I want our team to understand, and I think they do, that if they're going to play a lot of snaps or as many reps as they want to, we need they need to practice well all week and, and show us that they're prepared. There are certain guys I, I think we planned on playing more and I wish would have played more and some others that need to, to step it up and practice well during the week to uh, to earn the playing time. Um, how, how often does that happen in the course of your career where half the game plan was out? Not very often. Um, not very often, and, and I told you we, we kind of turned our attention to these guys a little earlier than normal to to really get dialed in on a game plan. Uh, now we took a day in the middle of that and uh, practiced for contingencies and other things they might do, and uh, so the guys the guys knew what they were doing and prepared. Uh, but it's, you know certainly some of the schematic things that that we had planned for them uh, weren't there because of what we got. Yeah, he he's come in and done a great job being an, uh, a veteran, acting like a veteran. Um, he and Step had the best week and a half of preparation leading into the game, and, and they deserve to play. Ramir Johnson's done a really good job. Uh, when we got into kind of two-minute and throwing mode, um, we wanted somebody in there that was a little bit of threat in the past game. And um, every week at, at certain positions, there's going to be competition, and guys that practice the best are going to get more time. Yeah, they're getting close. They're getting close. Hey, Scott, what do you hope to get out of a game like this playing Fordham um, just after last week's special? Well, we, we just got to play well. Um, and in a lot of ways, we did play well. I, I said it after the game, but I, I really like this team. Um, our team has a chance to, to win a lot of games if we play well. The self-inflicted wounds can't happen. Um, every time we get a chance to get on the field and execute at a higher level and get a little better, uh, it's going to make us a better team down the stretch. Scott, is there a different feeling playing into this home opener, maybe the past, especially just because it's been so long that you've played in front of a, a pack more than Yeah, there, there's a different feeling for me. Um, we miss the fans so bad. It, being in Memorial Stadium last year with an empty house, um, it was it was almost depressing. And um, there's so much passion here, so many good fans. Uh, we can't wait to see them on Saturday. What kind of, what kind of atmosphere do you, do you anticipate? Uh, I've been to a lot of Husker games over my years and my life, and uh, don't expect it to be any different. What did uh, Wyatt and Oliver in particular do to kind of earn this playing time? A year ago now, they, they didn't play a lot. I mean, Oliver couldn't even practice, but a year later, they're, they're really two of your top four or five receivers. What did you see from them in camp that proved to you, maybe over some people that other people might say are more talented, that these are the guys you want them to be? Um, we have multiple receivers that I think can go in and function and play and make plays. And quite a few made plays on Saturday. Um, I think we need to rotate them even more. Uh, toward the end of the game, we could have kept some fresh guys on the field because we have a lot of guys ready to play. Uh, those two guys have been extremely consistent, haven't missed any time. Um, so as those guys are all competing, I think it was just consistency that uh, put them a little bit ahead. How much of a role does a quarterback trust a receiver? When you were a quarterback, um, I'm sure there were guys in your career where you're like, I trust that guy, I trust him. Um, how much is Adrian's trust and then factor into a receiver playing time? Well, you got to earn trust in anything you do. Um, I think there's a lot of guys Adrian trusts right now. Uh, some have been at every practice, and, and some have missed a little time. And, and certainly, consistency consistency helps. Um, but we we got enough guys out there to keep fresh guys on the field, and uh, everybody's got to know what they're doing. And uh, we should be able to have some some receivers with juice out there all the time. Yeah, I think the the plan for Xavier was to play a little more, and I, I expect he'll his reps will go up as as we go on here. What what what, what is held back? What held back his reps going into this game? Uh, Xavier's a super talented kid. He's been improving uh, every day since he's been here. Um, like I said, consistency has has to matter to some degree. Him and everybody else, um, you got to do it all week and give teammates and coaches and everyone else confidence that you're going to be in the right place and do the right thing all the time.
Unless we heard Saturday isn't sold out yet, do you have any thoughts on the sellout streak and its importance, or maybe a message to fans who might have lost some excitement after Saturday? Well, I hope nobody lost excitement after Saturday. Um, this team has a chance to be really good. I think this team's going to approve a lot to a lot of people. Um, you know, if, if there's still some tickets out there, buy them up and come watch this team. There's a special group of kids with a lot of character, uh, a lot of talent. Um, we can't wait to play in front of the fans, so um, we need you there. Adrian said there's a couple throws, obviously, like have back quarterback probably thinks that all the time. Is there a common thread, the, two, the one to Hickman and, and the one to Weaver in the end zone are both going the same way? Is that a is that tough? No, I don't think so. When you watch the tape, there are some unbelievable throws Adrian made, uh, sometimes with too much pressure standing right on top of him. Uh, so we got to make sure he's cleaner to make the throws that we've been seeing him make um, all spring, all fall. Um, he missed two. Um, and we, but when we get layups, we can't miss them. How would you grade out the offensive line? Uh, I'd let Coach Austin answer that. Uh, I've watched the tape five times, uh, but I certainly didn't go play by play and grade it. Yeah, I think just better communication, um, having him down there. Also, some of the things we're doing, having Coach Held in the box, uh, gives us some eyes that see see things a little differently. And uh, we decided to go that route this year. And um, that part worked pretty well. Oliver going to be the front returner from, from here on, based on what happened? No. Um, you know, Cam Taylor is, is one of our best players. I love him like a son. Um, he's a black shirt. He's a captain. Uh, you can't make try to make a play when you've been trained to do something else, and uh, he'll learn from it.